Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It gives you the energy to keep you going. And that's why we're making these absolutely delicious breakfast meal prep bowls. They're really easy to make. They're cheap and of course taste delicious. And I'll leave all of the nutritional values in the video, which is at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around for that. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. All right, starting out, we're going to make mixed vegetables. Here I have four potatoes. If you have large ones, only use three. And we're going to slice these into halves or thirds, depending on size. And then same again, slicing into strips, halves or thirds. Rotate those strips 90 degrees and then dice into medium sized pieces. Just make sure they're the same size, that way they'll cook at the same time. Next is one large bell pepper or capsicum. You can use red, yellow or green. And we're going to slice this in half, pick out the stem and then just bang it on the bench as well to remove any excess seeds as well as picking out any pith. You don't have to use this if you don't like it and you can change this up and use all sorts of different vegetables. With this though, we are gonna slice it into medium to large size strips, rotate in 90 degrees and dice it about the same size as the potato. That way everything cooks together. Last but not least is some onion. This is a brown or yellow onion. We're gonna remove the top and bottom, peel it and slice it in half, then slice into thirds or halves depending on size and then dice into large pieces. We're also going to do the exact same thing with one red onion. I know I'm showing two here, but one's going to be used later on in the recipe. These are also interchangeable. You can use one for the other. You don't have to use both. Anyway, with that done, this can all be placed into a large mixing bowl and then we're gonna add in two and a half grams of both onion and garlic powder for a nice concentrated flavor. Two and a half grams of smoked paprika and one gram of dried oregano, as well as sea salt flakes to taste, and of course, cracked black pepper. And I'm gonna hit it up with about 30 cracks worth. Get in there with clean hands and mix this well. You can also use a spoon, just until that seasoning is coating everything. And then we can transfer this onto a lined baking tray, spread it out so it's not sitting on top of one another, that way it won't steam so much, and then transfer it over to a preheated oven that's at 200 degrees Celsius or 390 degrees Fahrenheit and roast for 30 minutes. Moving on, we can then make a pico de gallo. This is completely optional. You really don't have to use it. We're gonna need five large tomatoes and I'm gonna slice these into thin, even-sized strips. If it gets a bit wobbly, just rotate the tomato so it sits flat on the bench and continue slicing. With the sliced strips, we can then stack two or three on top of one another if you're comfortable doing so. Slice them into thin strips again, rotate 90 degrees and dice into small pieces. Now this is the second red onion that I had on the screen before. We can slice this in half, leaving the root intact, make thin slices across, then a horizontal slice through the center to break up the formation and dice into even sized pieces, making sure it's the same size as everything else. That way the texture will be perfect. Now, if you don't like coriander or cilantro, you don't have to use this, but this is 10 grams worth and we're gonna scrunch it into a tight bunch to make it easier to work with and then just give it a rough chop, making sure that there's no large leaves or stems. For a little bit of spice, we're going with one jalapeno. We're gonna slice off the stem and just discard this as it's no longer needed, and then slice this in half lengthways. Remove the pith and seeds, which are optional. You can leave them in for even more heat, and then slice each half into thin strips. Rotate 90 degrees and dice again. Doing everything pretty much the same for this type of recipe. Last but not least, we're gonna need one lime. It's gonna add a nice little acidic punch. Just slice it in half and juice it with a citrus juicer or by hand. We can then add everything to a large mixing bowl that includes a tomato, onion, coriander, jalapeno and lime juice, along with sea salt flakes to taste and of course cracked black pepper, about 10 cracks worth. Give this a really good mix through just to make sure everything is evenly combined. You can also add a little bit of oil here if you wanted to, but once that's done, store it in the fridge and these are the macros per portion for the pico. Now this is completely optional, but here is 180 grams of sharp cheddar cheese. I'm just gonna grate this on the larger side of a box grater and this is gonna melt into everything once it's reheated. You don't have to use this if you want it to stay on the healthier side. As for the scrambled eggs, we're going to add 10 whole eggs to a large mixing bowl along with 50 milliliters of whole milk. Give that a good mix to break up all of those yolks and then whisk that through until it's nice and smooth. Last but not least is the sausages. These are 16 sausages that weigh about 600 grams and these are beef, but you can use anything you wanted to use. Okay, so now the prep is all done, we're going to place a large pan over medium high heat, add in 30 milliliters of olive oil to lube up the pan and then we can slide in our sausage. Spread these out evenly so they're not touching one another and they'll cook a lot better this way. And then we're going to cook these for about six to seven minutes just until they're completely golden all over. And we wanna rotate these every minute or so just to get that nice browning. You can also do these in the oven if you don't wanna do them in the pan. I'll leave the details about that in the description. But once you have these nice browned off sausages and they're cooked through, we can remove them from the pan and place them onto a plate. And these are the macros for the sausages and that is per portion. Let's then place that same pan back over a medium high heat, make sure it's nice and hot again, and then we can add in that scramble mix. And now all we have to do is stir this with a spatula, making sure you scrape the sides because it will stick very easily. 
We're going to cook this for about two minutes in total, just stirring around the sides and then folding it through the center. This will create beautiful soft curds that will be nice and fluffy and they reheat really well. And during this, you do want to check it for seasoning as well and just adjust if necessary. But please don't cook this all the way through because when you reheat it, it'll be extremely dry. But once you have wet, soft curds looking like this, we can remove it from the stovetop and these are the macros for the scrambled eggs per portion. Now, if your timing is right, once everything is done, those vegetables will also be perfectly cooked. We can remove them from the oven, being careful of any escaping steam. And these are the mixed vegetables macros per portion, and I'll show you everything together in a minute. Serving up is really simple. Just divide everything by five. You can do it in pretty much any order you like, but I like to go with the potatoes and the mixed vegetables, then with the sausages. And then I'm gonna add in the cheese. That way when you reheat it, it will melt into those potatoes and the sausages. And then obviously follow that up with the pico de gallo. And then the last thing to add is the scrambled egg. You can do it any way you want, and you can also serve these things on the side if you don't want to reheat them, but that obviously will result in a lot of meal prep containers. Garnishing is completely optional. I'm just going to pick over some coriander or cilantro, and I'm also going to top it off with some sriracha mayo. This stuff is absolutely fantastic. But with all of that done, we have then just created these absolutely fantastic breakfast meal prep bowls. And as promised, here is the macros for the complete dish, and that is per portion. Now with these, we're gonna let them cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes before placing on the lids and then putting them in the fridge for up to five days and in the freezer for up to four months. Reheating is super simple. Place them in the microwave for a couple of minutes, mixing it around regularly just until it's nice and hot. And everything in these can be microwaved. It's all suitable to be in hot. Alternatively, you can separate everything, but it's just gonna result in a lot of different containers. Now with all of that said and done, there is only one thing left to do, and that is of course, we can then dig in. If you start your day with that, it's definitely going to be a good one because that is absolutely fantastic. It's really light, it's fresh, super tasty, and there's loads of different texture in there as well, so it all blends really well. Although there is a few different ingredients, of course, it is really easy to make, and this is pretty much a template for you guys, and you can swap and change all sorts of ingredients. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button. It really helps me out, and consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. This thing is making me sound.